Hi everyone, this is Brittany from Just Be Crafty. If you're new here, welcome, and if not, thank you so much for coming back. In today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make these super toasty winter wok mittens. This tutorial is beginner friendly, but it assumes you already know the following skills. Chaining, single crochet, half double crochet, double crochet, slip stitch, and that's it. Once you have those skills under your belt, I'm confident you can tackle this pattern. This pattern can be viewed for free on my blog, and I also have two options for accessing the pattern digitally if you'd like to purchase the PDF version. As always, I'll have links to the written pattern in the description box below. You'll need to follow along with the written pattern as you watch the tutorial. To get started, you'll need two balls of Lion Brand Woolies yarn in your preferred color, a five and a half millimeter hook, scissors, stitch markers, and a yarn needle. For this project, we'll be crocheting with two strands of yarn as if they're one to make our mittens extra thick. To do this, I like to pull from the middle of both of my yarn skeins, but sometimes you can find the end nice and neatly, and other times it comes out like a blob just like this, but that's just real life. I'm going to go ahead and untangle this and come back in a little bit. Okay, so I found both of my center pool ends from both skeins, and I'll be crocheting them together as if they are one. We will begin with a slip knot and then chain 11. Alright, so I have 11 chains. We can now flip our foundation chain over to expose the little bumps or back bars on the bottom of our chain. We'll be crocheting into those little back bars. So for row one, starting in the third chain from our hook, we're going to make a half double crochet. And we're going to continue to make a half double crochet in each chain across. So find that next back bar and make a half double crochet. Repeat this process across the row. We'll end row one with nine stitches. All right, so we just completed row one and we can now turn our work and we're ready to begin row two. For row two, we're going to start with a chain two. And for this row, we're going to be working in the back loops of our stitches only. So if you look at the tops of your crochet stitches, you'll see it looks like a braid. There'll be one loop that's closer to you and one loop that's you know, further away from you. The further away loop is the back loop. So we're going to be making our half double crochets into that back loop. So find that first stitch and put your hook into the back loop of that first stitch and we're going to make a half double crochet. And we're just going to repeat that process across the row. So into the next stitch, go into the back loop and make your half double crochet. Repeat this process across the row. And at the end of the row, you should still have nine stitches. Okay, so we just completed row two. We can now turn our work and begin row three. I'm gonna take a quick second here to count my stitches and make sure I still have nine. So you'll wanna make sure that you're maintaining nine stitches across for each of the rows of your mitten cuff ribbing. So to start row three, we're just gonna be repeating row two. So we're gonna start with a chain two and we're going to be working half double crochet stitches into the back loop only 
across the row. Keep repeating row two until you have 17 total rows. You want the length of the ribbing to be between seven and a half and eight inches long. So if 17 rows is a little longer than that or a little bit shorter than that, just crochet enough rows to get you into that sweet spot ballpark. If you'd like, pause here and meet back up with me once you've completed all of your ribbing rows. All right, so my ribbing rows are now completed and I'm now going to create my cuff. To do this, we're going to fold the piece in half so that our starting edge and ending edge are now touching. Line up the stitches and chain one. We're now going to slip stitch the outer loops together to form our cuff. Working one stitch at a time, we're going to grab the outer loops of both stitches And we're going to slip stitch. And we're going to find the next stitch, the outer loop of both layers, and slip stitch. We're going to repeat this process across the row to form our cuff. The cuff is now slip stitched together, so we can now turn the cuff right side out. To start round one, we're going to chain one, and we're going to make our first single crochet of the round into that same area as the chain one. We're now going to make 21 more single crochet evenly along this top edge for a total of 22 stitches. To make it easier to space your stitches evenly, you can flatten your cuff and envision making 11 stitches along the front and 11 stitches along the back to get your 22 stitches. And as we're single crocheting along this top edge, I like to make sure that I'm grabbing at least two strands of yarn as I go. I don't want to just grab an area that has one strand. Uh, it's just, it won't be quite as strong. If you'd like, pause here and be back up with me once you've crocheted 22 stitches total around the wrist of your mitten. I'm finishing up on my 22nd stitch, and we're not going to be joining at the end of our rounds. We're going to use our seam from the cuff as a landmark for the beginning and end of each round. We're now ready to begin round two. So in the first stitch, we are going to place a single crochet. And in the next stitch, we're going to do a double crochet. In the next stitch, we're going to do a single crochet. And in the stitch after that, we're going to do a double crochet. Keep repeating by alternating between single crochet and double crochets all the way around. Your last stitch of the round should be a double crochet. If you'd like, pause here and meet back up with me once you finish this round. We are now on to round three, and I'm going to place that stitch marker on my cuff seam to mark where the start and end of each round will be, as I mentioned before. For this stitch pattern, unless otherwise noted, you'll be working a single crochet stitch and a double crochet stitch into the single crochet stitch from the previous round, and we'll be skipping over the double crochets. So find that first single crochet of the round, and we're going to make a single crochet and a double crochet into that same stitch. We're going to skip the next stitch, which is a double crochet from the previous round, and we're going to make a single crochet and double crochet into the next stitch. To help with explaining in this pattern, each paired single crochet and double crochet will now be called a cluster. Repeat this process all the way around and use the stitch marker on the seam to approximate where the round ends. 
For round four, we're just going to keep repeating more of the same. So you want to just keep working in pattern. End this round by placing your last cluster stitch in the cluster that's most centered over your stitch marker. At the beginning of the next round, we're going to be increasing for the thumb. All right, so we made it to round five. And like I said before, we want to center our thumb hole over our cuffs seam. So we should have ended round four by making our last cluster into the single crochet of the cluster that is most centered over our stitch marker. We are now ready to make our increase. To increase, we are simply going to make a cluster in this first double crochet. We're going to make a single crochet and double crochet into this next double crochet stitch. And this is our increase. And we're going to mark the double crochet of this increase cluster with a stitch marker. So that way we know where to make our increase in the next round. Next, we're going to make a single crochet and double crochet into the next stitch. From this point on, we're going to continue working in pattern. So we're going to skip a stitch and then single and double crochet into the next stitch as usual. Repeat this process to the end of the round. All right, and we're now ready to begin round six, which is basically just a repeat of round five. So we're going to continue making our cluster stitches in the single crochet stitches from the previous row, but in the marked stitch, we're going to make another increase. So into that double crochet, we are going to make a single crochet and double crochet into that same stitch. So this is our increase of round six for our thumb. And in the next stitch, which is a single crochet, we're going to make our single and double crochet stitch. And as you can see, our increases are centered nicely over our cuff seam. And grab your stitch marker and mark the double crochet of this increase cluster, so that way it can help us with placement of our thumb hole in the next round. Continue working in pattern until you work almost all the way back around. We're going to stop at one cluster before our marked increase cluster. So we're going to be leaving one cluster unworked before our marked increased cluster. If you'd like, pause here and meet back up with me once you've completed this round. We're now on to round seven and ready to place our thumb hole. We've stopped and have one more cluster remaining unworked before our marked increase cluster. So after completing our last cluster of the previous round, we're going to place a marker into the next stitch. This should be a double crochet stitch of the previous round. Starting with this marked stitch, count over nine stitches. In the ninth stitch, place a stitch marker. This should be another double crochet. We are now going to chain six. And taking care not to twist our stitches, we're going to place a single crochet and double crochet into the next stitch after the second stitch marker. Continue working in pattern for round seven and stop before you get to the chain six for our thumb hole. That will start round eight. So if you'd like, pause here and meet back up with me once you're ready to start round eight. We've made it back around and we're ready to begin round eight. So we're going to continue in pattern for the chain six for our thumb hole. What we're going to do is we're going to make one single crochet into the first chain and we're going to do one double crochet into the next chain. Repeat this process across the chains. Once you've completed your last chain, which will be a double crochet, into the next single crochet stitch, we're going to continue in the pattern as established.
For round nine, we're going to continue working as established. We're working a single crochet and double crochet stitch into the single crochet stitch of the previous round and skipping over the double crochets. Continue using the cuff seam to mark the start and end of each round. And we're going to keep working in pattern until we've completed up through round 17. So if you'd like, pause here and meet back up with me once you've completed round 17. We've now completed round 17 and it's time to try on our mitten. The length of the mitten should be just about level with your pinky. So feel free to add or take away rounds until you get it to this point where it is level with your pinky. And now it's time to prep for decreasing. We're going to do this by flattening out our mitten so the thumb hole is centered over our cuff seam. Find the two clusters that are most centered over the thumb hole and mark these clusters with stitch markers. We're now going to flatten out our mitten again, but this time the thumb hole will now be positioned to the right. Count over five clusters over from our leftmost marker and mark this cluster with a stitch marker. Mark the next cluster with a stitch marker. These will be where your decreases will go for the next round. At this point, take a look at your mitten. Your thumb hole should be positioned towards the right, and you should have four stitch markers on your mitten. Two should be on the right side of your mitten in line with your thumb hole, and two should be on the leftmost side of your mitten. If your mitten looks like this, you're now ready to begin round 18. So over this first marked cluster, we're going to decrease by making one single crochet stitch over the cluster. So to do this, we're going to insert our hook into the first stitch, draw up a loop, insert our hook into the next stitch, draw up a loop, yarn over, and pull through all three loops. We're now going to make one double crochet over the next cluster. So yarn over, insert hook into the next stitch, draw up a loop, yarn over, pull through two loops. Insert your hook into the next stitch, draw up a loop, yarn over, pull through two loops, yarn over, pull through two loops. We've just made two decreases. This decreased single crochet and decreased double crochet are now going to count together as one cluster. Mark these two stitches together as one cluster with a stitch marker. This will count as the first cluster of the round. Continue in pattern to the next marked clusters and repeat the decreases. Mark these two stitches together as one cluster and continue in pattern to the end of the round. All right, so now we're there. We've just reached our next stitch marker. We're going to make one single crochet decrease over these two cluster stitches. So make a single crochet decrease over this first cluster And over the next cluster, we're gonna make a double crochet decrease. We're now going to mark this new cluster with a stitch marker. So those two decrease stitches are now going to count as a cluster and we're going to continue working in pattern until we get to the end of the round. We're now ready to begin round 19. We're going to start by making a single crochet decrease over our first cluster, which is marked by a stitch marker. So in that first cluster that's marked by a stitch marker, we're going to make a single crochet decrease. And over the next cluster, we're going to make a double crochet decrease. We're going to mark this new cluster with a stitch marker so we know where to make our decrease in the next round. 
Continue working in pattern until you reach your next stitch marker. All right, so we've just reached the next cluster, our next stitch marker. And once again, we're going to make a single crochet decrease over this cluster. And over the next cluster, we're going to make a double crochet decrease. Use a stitch marker to mark this new cluster. Continue working in pattern until you get to the end of the round. So from this point forward, we're going to keep repeating round 19 until you have 10 stitches remaining. So if you'd like, pause here and meet back up with me once you have 10 stitches remaining. All right, so at this point I have 10 stitches remaining, so I am ready to work on cinching the top of my mitten closed. So we can remove our stitch markers. We can go ahead and cut our yarn, leaving about a 12 or so inch tail. And I like to slip stitch into the next stitch or two to just even out the top edge. And then we're going to fasten off. Thread a yarn needle and we're going to whip stitch around the top edge. To do this, you're going to start working from the inside out. You were just going to go into each stitch. So insert your needle from the inside out into each stitch and work in this fashion until you get all the way back around to the beginning again. Once we bleed it back around to the beginning, pull the yarn tail to cinch the hole closed. Turn mitten wrong side out and bring the yarn needle and tail to the wrong side of the mitten. Pull tail to recinch the top hole if needed and make a stitch or two to close any remaining hole or gap at the top if needed. Secure in place and weave in your remaining yarn tail. Turn mitten right side out and now it's time to work on the thumb. So we're almost done with our mitten and now we're ready to begin on working the thumb. To begin working the thumb, let's grab two stitch markers and we're going to mark the first chain and the sixth chain from that chain space we made up to make the whole of the thumb. So count over six chains and mark that sixth chain with a stitch marker. Then go ahead and mark that first chain with another stitch marker. So that way we know where the first and last chain are at the top outline of our thumb. And so as we go, we're going to wanna close up those gaps in the corner. So just be mindful of that, but I'll show you how when we get there. To begin round one of the thumb, we're going to count over four stitches along the bottom edge of our thumb. This should be a single crochet stitch. And this is gonna be a decrease round. So count over four stitches, it should be a single crochet. Insert your hook and attach your yarn. And remember, we're still working with two strands of yarn. That way our thumb can be extra warm just like the rest of our hand. We're going to chain one and we're going to make a single crochet decrease over this cluster stitch. So we're gonna insert our hook, draw up a loop, insert our hook into the next stitch, draw up a loop, yarn over and pull through all three loops. We're now going to make a double crochet decrease over our next cluster. So get that tail out of the way. We're gonna yarn over and please forgive me, but I did this double crochet decrease a little bit different than I did my other double crochet decreases, but we still accomplish the same thing. We're still decreasing. I just kind of did my yarn overs and pull throughs a little bit different, but that's okay. Do whichever method works for you. It doesn't have to be perfect. You will never know that you, I did two different types of double crochet decreases. So for this one, what I just did was yarn over, insert your hook into the first stitch, draw up a loop, insert hook into the next stitch, draw up a loop, yarn over, pull through three loops, 
yarn over, pull through two loops. And that is a double crochet decrease. Now in the next stitch, we're going to make a single crochet. And in the next stitch, this should be a double crochet. We're going to make a double crochet decrease over this stitch and the first chain along the thumb's top edge. Okay, so we're gonna yarn over, insert our hook into that next stitch. Draw up a loop, insert our hook into that sixth chain from the top edge, draw up a loop, yarn over, pull through three loops, yarn over, pull through two loops. And we've just done another double crochet decrease. So in that next chain, we're going to make a single crochet. Okay, in the next chain, we're gonna make a double crochet. In the next stitch, we're going to do a single crochet decrease over the next two chains. So make one single crochet stitch over the next two chains to make a decrease. Okay, and then the next chain will be our first chain of the thumb chain outline and we're going to make a double crochet decrease over that chain and the next double crochet stitch along the bottom edge. So we're gonna make a double crochet decrease. Let's go ahead and tuck that tail to the inside of our mitten. And now in the next stitch, we're going to make a single crochet and double crochet into that next stitch. And skip the next stitch. We've now reached the end of the round and we should have 10 stitches. If you'd like, go ahead and count your stitches to make sure you have the right amount. And if not, if you need to, you can fudge a little to just get yourself to 10 stitches. So now for rounds two through six, continue working in pattern. So for round two, you're going to find the next single crochet stitch and we're going to work a single crochet and double crochet into that same stitch. We're going to skip a stitch, single crochet and double crochet into the next stitch. Keep repeating this process working in pattern until you complete round six. If you'd like, pause here and meet back up with me once you've completed round six of the thumb. All right, so I've just completed round six and let's go ahead and try on our mitten. Our thumb should be sticking out just the tiniest bit from our little thumb hole. Should be about level with our thumb or sticking out just a tiny little bit. We're now ready to begin the decreasing in round seven, which will be the last round of our thumb. For this round, we're going to make a single crochet decrease over the next cluster. And over the next cluster after that, we're going to do a double crochet decrease. Keep alternating between single crochet and double crochet decreases over the next cluster. At the end of the round, you should end with five stitches remaining. If you'd like, pause here and meet back up with me once you've completed round seven. All right, so at this point I've completed all of my decreases so we can go ahead and cut our yarn, leaving about a 12 inch tail, and we can fasten off. Grab your yarn needle and we're going to whip stitch around the top edge of our thumb hole, just like we did for the top of our mitten.
we're just going to repeat that same process. So we're gonna whip stitch around this top edge. And we're then going to pull our yarn tail to cinch the hole closed. We're gonna turn our thumb wrong side out and bring the yarn tail to the wrong side as well. We're going to continue stitching our thumb hole closed and we're going to weave in this tail end to hide it in there forever. This part can be a little bit tricky, but just be patient. So we've got our thumb wrong side out. Repull your tail to make sure that the hole is nice and closed. Stitch if you need to, to close any remaining gaps. I like to secure with a couple of knots. Next, go ahead and weave in your end. We are now moving on to finishing, which is optional. I like to close up slash tighten the bottom of my mitten cuff so cold air and snow won't get in through the bottom of my mitten. So I'm going to tighten it up by doing a round of single crocheting and then a round of slip stitches. If you don't want your mitten cuff to be any tighter, you can skip this step altogether and just weave in your ends and be on your merry way. If you'd like to do these next two finishing rounds, stay put. Using two strands of yarn, attach yarn at the mitten's cuff seam and chain one. Single crochet evenly around this edge. I did 24 stitches total for mine, but you can add a couple more if you'd like yours a little bit looser or take some stitches away if you'd like yours a little bit tighter. So continue working evenly until you have about 24 stitches around your mitten cuff edge. All right, I've made it all the way back around to the beginning again, and I'm ready for round two. In round two, we are going to simply loosely slip stitch into every stitch around. So we're just slip stitching into every stitch in the round. We're almost to the end of the round. We're gonna end the round by joining and slip stitching into the first stitch of the round. At this point, try on your mitten to make sure you have the perfect fit and adjust those bottom stitches along this mitten edge if you need to. I like the way mine fits. So I'm ready to cut my yarn and fasten off. I'm ready to thread my yarn needle and I'm going to weave in all of my remaining ends on the wrong side of my mitt. Now it's time to make your second mitten. So you'll just repeat all of these same exact steps. Both mittens are exactly the same. And there you have it, the Winter Walk Mittens. I really hope you enjoyed today's tutorial. If you did, please let me know by giving the video a thumbs up. And if you haven't already and would like to, make sure you subscribe so you never miss a new tutorial. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.